Kelsey here, and today we're gonna make a heart-shaped shaker from scratch. I'm gonna go through all of the components, including how to build the SVG yourself. So the supplies you'll need for the final product are some acetate. This is just a thin plastic that I get in about 12 sheets. You're gonna need paper in a variety of colors. For my lettering, I am going to use heat transfer vinyl, the foil iron-on. I'm using foam sheets. I get these also from my craft store. Some craft glue. I'm gonna need my mini press, some hot glue, and a cake stick. If you're going to use iron-on vinyl, you'll also need your mat. And of course, you're going to need something for inside your shaker. So you're going to want to download Inkscape. This is a free program and I will link it below. We're going to start with grabbing the circle option over on the left. I'm using a Mac. So I'm just making a circle and I'm removing my stroke. That's an outside line. And I'm going to tilt it. So as you can see, it's just an oval, nothing special. And I'm going to copy and paste it or duplicate it. And then up top, I'm just going to mirror that image. The mirror option is going to be the arrows pointing away from each other horizontally. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab both of those ovals so that they're highlighted. And I'm going to center them vertically so that they are even on the top and the bottom, but not in the middle. Now I wanna connect these so that they're one shape. So under path, when you have both of them highlighted, you're going to hit union. So we're getting into the area of it being the shape of a heart, but it's not there quite yet. So we're going into the node section. So to get to node up in the left, you'll see a regular arrow and then an arrow with three dots. Nodes are little points when your machine is cutting. This is the point that that machine is going to. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight just the bottom three nodes and then I'm going to hit this button up top and that'll make them straight so that it looks more like a heart. So now you can see we have the general shape. I just have to change this one node on the left side. It's going to be changed from a diamond to a square and that's gonna round out my side. So now we have the base of our heart shaker. So this is going to be our back piece and we're going to make all of the other pieces based off of this one shape. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do is we need to make our foam piece. So we're going to duplicate our heart. You can either do copy and paste, you can do duplicate or use your shortcuts if you know them. So I'm changing my color and I'm going to duplicate this back heart. I like to work with duplicates because I always will have my original just in case I mess up and need to go back. So with our second heart, we are going to make our outline. But to start, we need to make this heart a little bit smaller because you don't want your foam piece to be all the way at the edge and you don't want it to be bigger either. So here you see we have inset and outset. This is going to make it larger and smaller. So I'm going to use inset and I'm going to actually use the shortcut. So control with the um, inward parentheses to make mine smaller. And I'm gonna make it smaller by about eight to 10 times. So I'm centering it to see where it would be at into that other heart. And I just want to inset it so that it's smaller because we are going to make this the foam part of our shaker. So now we need to create a stroke. So you can get this panel that's on the right side by hitting shift command F on a Mac. So I am going to hit the fill color on the stroke paint. So now we have a fill, I'm gonna change it to black so you can see it. So around that purple heart, you see we have a black line and I'm gonna change this and make it thicker. So now it's at about a 10, it's a little bit thicker. So when we cut it out of foam, it's going to be nice and thick. I'm going to go to fill and I'm going to X that out so that there's no color inside anymore. We just want that stroke. So now if you go to nodes, which is what we learned earlier, you'll see that the nodes are all inside the stroke. We need to change that. So you're going to go to path up top 
and change stroke to path. And now you see all the nodes on the outside of that stroke. So now you created your foam layer. I changed this to pink because that's always the last color that cuts on my Cricut. So I'm going to duplicate this now because we're gonna make our acetate layer. And you want your acetate to cover over your foam layer. So we are going to break this apart. So you're gonna highlight this piece, go to path and hit break apart. So you'll have two pieces, the outside piece and the inside piece. You can delete that inside piece, keep the outside piece, and I like to change this to blue so that I know it's for my acetate. Now, just like before, when we did our inset, we are gonna do our outset now on this, just one or two times, nothing crazy. You still wanna be able to see that red in the back. My last step to create our shaker is to duplicate that foam layer one more time. You're gonna duplicate this and then just like we've been doing, we are going to outset it. So not inset, but outset. And this is going to be your top layer of paper. So I'm going to layer everything and center it. And then I'm going to outset using my shortcuts on my keyboard. You can also use where we went into the path and outset. And I'm gonna make it bigger so that it covers everything and you don't see the foam part, you don't see the acetate part, and so your shaker should have at least these four layers, and that is a shaker. So that is really all you need to create a shaker in Inkscape, and now when you go to save this as an SVG file, you can easily upload this into your Cricut Design Space. So we have our four layers, paper, foam, acetate, paper. So let's go ahead and save it, and then open it up in Cricut Design Space. So here you see it is rather large, so I'm gonna change the size of this and make it a little bit smaller. You can see over on the right, you have those four layers, so each layer would cut on its own mat. I'm gonna change my two paper layers to the same color so that then they cut, it is all cohesive. And now we're just gonna add some text to this quickly. I'm gonna cut out my text in the iron-on vinyl, so make sure that you mirror if you are doing iron-on for your lettering. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in some text and change the font. I'm gonna link this font below. It is called Love Story from dafont.com. And now I'm just gonna do a couple layers of offset and make sure that it's contoured properly so there's no weird holes in between my letters and then we can get started on the building. This is where you have the freedom to do whatever you want with this shaker and write whatever you'd like. Just make sure that if you're using something in script that you are welding it if you need to. I'm gonna be cutting this all separate letters, but it's all attached together, so it worked out. I'm gonna change out all of my colors, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm duplicating my foam layer because I use those sheets and they can run a little thin. So I want to make sure that I have enough height. So now I'm just going to clean my acetate. I got these little alcohol wipes on Amazon. I will link that in my Amazon storefront. I'm going to wipe my sheet back and forth and then let it dry before I start gluing on it. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start attaching my foam. I'm using craft glue for this. You can also use hot glue or you can use a tape gun, I guess, if you wanna try that. I prefer to use something that dries pretty solid. So I'm gonna use craft glue along the foam part, and I'm going to actually attach this to my acetate. That's the way I like to start. So just go around the edge, and you're going to glue your foam down to your acetate, making sure that you're getting your foam as close to the edges of that acetate as possible. We're going to go ahead and do the second layer of our foam right on top of this. And again, you just want to keep everything as close to the edge as possible and as evenly layered. So after you're done layering your acetate and your foam pieces, I'm going to finish up this part of my shaker by putting my paper top on the opposite side of that acetate so that it's not on the foam, but it's on the acetate side. I'm also not using a ton of glue here. It really doesn't take that much to attach on pretty well. 
Once I have my paper part on top, I'm just gonna double check to make sure you can't see the foam from straight on. You're obviously gonna be able to see it from the sides, but I wanna make sure from straight on, you can't see that foam. And then I'm gonna put this off to the side actually and let it dry for a little bit. And I'm gonna get started on weeding my iron-on vinyl. I am using the Cricut brand foil iron-on. I love this vinyl, it weeds super easily. And this font has teeny tiny little hearts on every letter. And so you have to weed out all of those hearts. And so I love this vinyl because it weeds super, super easily. All of my tools are by Hobby Captain and that is also linked in my Amazon storefront. So I'm gonna go ahead and weed through all of these letters and then I am going to turn on my mini press to the lowest setting. For paper, you don't need to have it on a super high heat. So I'm pulling out each of my red papers to line them up and see that they're gonna line up properly. And then I'm going to press my heat transfer vinyl with my mini press onto the paper for only about 10 seconds. And the biggest part of this when you're using heat transfer vinyl on paper is that you want to let it fully cool. Don't begin to peel off the backing of your heat transfer vinyl until everything is cool or your letters are going to peel right off. So I went ahead and I did each word individually with the backing, adding on the next word as I went along. And again, only for about 10 seconds on each letter. And then we're gonna go ahead and set this whole piece off to the side to cool. So we're getting to the end of our shaker. This is the easy part. We're gonna fill it with our confetti. I got these at my Dollar Tree. I'm using red and pink. And now we need to glue on the backing of our heart. So I'm taking my craft glue and going along gently on the edges. You want to try to avoid getting your glue onto the confetti because it'll easily stick. And then you'll have confetti everywhere, which is a very common thing for me. And now we're going to put our back of our heart on and that is the completion of the shaker part of your shaker. So now we're gonna peel off that backing to our words and it should peel off really, really easily. So you, if there's any resistance, you definitely wanna wait until it's cool. And I love the way it turns out. The foil looks so awesome on paper and this font is super cute for Valentine's Day. Now I'm gonna use my foam tape squares. I got these at the dollar store, but you can also use glue or hot glue, whatever you prefer. And I am just going to attach my letters onto the last offset that we made in Cricut Design Space. And then I'm going to attach it onto my heart. I didn't like using these foam squares at first, but now I've become a big fan of them. They add great height to your projects. So our last step is just to add our cake stick onto the back. I'm gonna use hot glue for this. I have literally the tiniest cake sticks in the world, so I always suggest you get something a little bit longer and I'm going to attach this, and you have created your shaker from scratch. Awesome job. Thank you so much for following along with me today and making a project in Inkscape all the way down to the finished product. Don't forget to subscribe. Happy crafting.